But first, our top story tonight. It is tense but calm in Kurunkulam in Tamil Nadu as the anti-nuclear protests intensified today. The leader of the protests, SP Uday Kumar, had earlier said that he would court arrest tonight. But in some last-minute drama that's played out over the last couple of hours or so, he was whisked away by locals in a boat. No one knows where he is right now. The area has turned into a virtual battlefield between protesters and police. Senior lawyer Prashant Bhushan here in Delhi has approached the Supreme Court today, meanwhile, appealing against a Madras High Court order that gave the go-ahead for the plant. The petition says that the government has ignored 17 key safety measures as suggested by its own task force. So why is India's largest nuclear plant facing such huge opposition? One killed. Burnt buildings, women and children lati charged, tear gassed. Over 10,000 protesters gathered in this remote area of Tamil Nadu, vowing not to give in. But as these pictures transmit across the nation, why is India's largest nuclear plant facing such problems? Anti nuclear activists suggest Kurunkulam reactors can suffer the same fate as the tsunami stricken reactors at Fukushima in Japan. The plant authorities say these reactors are among the safest in the world with a 400% backup. These systems also incorporate a unique passive cooling system to avoid a Fukushima type accident. Anti nuclear activists allege that adequate information about the project and nuclear power has not been provided to the local people. The plant authorities say two expert committees, one from the centre and another from the state government, has declared that the plants are safe. Anti-nuclear protesters say don't trust the reactors on the local population who don't want them in their backyard. Plant authorities say Tamil Nadu is awfully short of electricity and once these come online, they will help solving the state power crisis. Activists say the environmental impact of these projects have not been credibly assessed and the storage disposal of nuclear waste is a cause for concern. Government says this is untrue. Inbuilt safety features minimize the risk of any radiation leaks. The government accuses the anti-nuclear protests are funded by NGOs from America and Europe and says using children to spearhead the protest is abhorring. Anti-nuclear protesters say the movement is funded by the locals contributing their hard-earned wages and accuse the police of instigating the violence. And so as these anti-nuclear protests spread, are the fears real or are they motivated on the program with us tonight from the Congress party, Lok Sabha MP and spokesperson Manish Tiwari. We have senior Supreme Court lawyer Prashant Bhushan who's gone and filed a petition in the Supreme Court today against this plant. Senior lawyer Dushan Dave is also with us. Gani Shankaran, senior journalist from Chennai who's been following this story closely. And Mr. Krishna Prasad, the editor-in-chief of Outlook is in the studio with us. Manish, let me ask you first. Earlier this year in February, the Prime Minister had first said that American NGOs were behind these anti-nuclear protests in Tamil Nadu. Then you have the Home Minister yesterday repeating that saying that some foreign NGOs are involved but he goes on to say, I'm aware of these NGOs but I'm not going to name those countries. Can you elaborate on this? I mean why shouldn't the government then name who these foreign NGOs are if you're so sure that they're the ones funding these protests? Well if the, uh, if the Prime Minister of India has made a statement with regard to the sources of funding or the alleged sources of funding and if the Home Minister has gone and underscored it you know obviously you know they are speaking on some authority and on the basis of some information. You know, but having said that, you know, allow me to digress to a larger point which needs to be made. You know, I was listening to my very esteemed colleague Prashant Bhushan uh, during a debate last night and uh, the point which repeatedly came through since I did not follow it very closely was that apparently what happened in Fukushima, you know, where uh, because of a tsunami and an earthquake uh, there was damage to the Fukushima plant and there was a release of radiation in the air. May I very respectfully point out that uh, 80 kilometers north of Fukushima, there is another nuclear re reactor called Oganawa. Oganawa was actually more closer to the epicenter of the tsunami and the earthquake. And Oganawa was not only not damaged, but uh, incidentally, you know, people who lived in that area 
actually went and took shelter in that nuclear reactor because they thought it was the safest place to be. And the efficacy of the design, the uh, safety and security uh, installations, you know, was testified by the IAEA when they did an independent audit on Ogonawa and Fukushima concurrently after the tsunami and the earthquake. So therefore, I think uh, when we have a debate, you know, with regard to safety and security, and we use Fukushima as an example, I think it is also important to bring Ogonawa into the debate. Okay. Because, but, you know, it is the same coast. Th that's you know, a, that is a good point. But, but the question is that, you know, when the government talks about a foreign hand theory, why doesn't the government spell out what this foreign hand is? Because otherwise, Manish, people honestly believe that it's just a crazy conspiracy theory. Well, I completely agree with you, Nidhi. I think uh, <laughs> that uh, it is imperative that if there is evidence uh, to that effect, that evidence must be put in the public domain. But having said that, you know, there are certain sensitivities insofar as diplomacy is concerned and you being somebody who's covered foreign affairs for a very long time, you know, I, I think you're well aware of that. So therefore, if the Prime Minister or the Home Minister, you know, does make a statement with regard to foreign funding, I don't think that they would do it lightly. Okay. India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app. Fully optimized for retina display. Full screen view. Faster response time. And Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.